Yeah, I need, I need to know where, uh, where are the output values uh, decreasing in value and where they're increasing. That can be a real pain. So instead, uh, let's determine the derivative. Because now we know that if the derivative is positive on one side and negative on the other side, then uh, we've got a possible extrema. Now, I did this with the other classes today. Did we look at a sign chart on Thursday? Okay, good. So we don't need to work that hard then to uh, develop one here. Um, so the derivative, again, this is a fairly easy one now. Hopefully everyone's got it. 3x squared minus uh, 12x. Okay, and I'd like to know where is this derivative zero or undefined? So I determine the derivative. Second thing I is I, uh, I set the derivative equal to zero. And I see immediately that I could factor out a 3x. I'd have x minus 4. I'll make that equal to zero on this side so we can see it again. If I've got a product, two factors equal to zero, what do I know about one of them? So either 3x is zero or x minus 4 is zero, which means that x is zero or x equals 4. What do you call these? These are our critical numbers, yeah. These are the critical numbers. Okay, so I want to know where is the derivative positive and where's the derivative negative. Third thing we do is uh, set up a sign chart. Because I've got two critical numbers, it means I can divide the number line into how many subsets. Three? Three subsets, okay. And uh, let's look at what our intervals are. Um, over here, I've got um, x is less than zero. In here, I've got zeros less than x, less than four. In here, I have x is greater than four. So I've got three subsets of that. What am I looking for? The whole purpose of this is to determine, and I'm going to do that by using what? Using the first derivative. If I want to know where the function is increasing, where it's decreasing, I'm going to use the first derivative. And what about the first derivative do I need to know? Where the first derivative is the negative? Just a little review as we go along here. Okay, so uh, Alyssa, you said let's choose a test value. Okay, so choose some value in the interval. And again, I just try to always get one as, about as easy as I can. You can choose whatever you like. I want to know, um, I don't really care what the value of the derivative is, I just want to know the sign of uh, the derivative. So I'm going to go back up and look at that. I've got uh, 3x, x minus 4. So if I put negative 1 in, I have 3 times negative 1. And that was, again, do make sure, x minus 4. And then I have negative 1 minus 4. Um, 3 times negative 1, I think that's a negative value, isn't it? Sure. Negative 1 minus 4, is that positive or negative? Negative. A negative times a negative is positive. So the first derivative is positive for all the input values less than 0. What about uh, at 1? Now let's see, I have 3 times 1 times 1 minus 4. 3 times 1 is 1 minus 4, negative. So the first derivative, is it positive or negative in this interval? 
that's negative. Okay. And I'll do the same thing with my 5. 3 times 5 is positive. 5 minus 4 is positive. That means that the first derivative is positive. And then I draw a conclusion. If the first derivative is negative, that means that the function is decreasing. If the first derivative is positive, it means that the function is increasing. And if the first derivative is negative again, the function is decreasing. The first derivative negative looks like that. Positive looks like that. Those are wrong. I sure are, aren't they? Boy, I'm glad you guys are awake. I just wanted to see if you guys were thinking with me. Help me out here. If it's positive, it's increasing. If it's negative, it's decreasing. If it's positive, it's increasing again. Okay, so let's try this again. If the first derivative is positive, it looks like that. If it's negative, it looks like that. If it's positive, it looks like that. At x equaling 0, f of x has a what? Relative? Because you're going up and then down. Okay, maximum. And at x equaling 4, f of x has a relative minimum. Okay, did we answer all the questions? Kevin, you have a question? Okay, so what's it asking us to do? Find all relative extrema? Did we find the extrema? Yes, now, do we know we're right or not? You guys sometimes just, well, you didn't there. You were definitely watching me. But uh, you can't let me do all the work and make all the mistakes. So what can we do to check it? My work and yours. Okay, let's do it. Are we graphing the function, though, or the derivative? The function. We want to know what's happening for the function. The derivative is just helping us to know what happens with the function. Okay, looks like we need a little window adjustment here. So let's do a little window adjustment. I'm going to make this, um, oh, I think negative 2 and uh, maybe 8 scale by 1. Uh, maybe a negative 2, looks like maybe a 15, I'm just guessing here, we'll scale by 1, and I'm having it on my, my pad, and if, I'm, if we need adjusting again, we can do that, no big deal. Yep, need a little bit of adjustment, don't we? So, uh, I missed the negative, you might have already gotten that uh, correct, so I'm going to go down here and make it negative 15 also. Wow. Did you find that you needed it more? I'll make my negative 20. There we go. I'm going to do one more adjustment because I like to see something above the um, The maximum, I'll make mine a positive 20 on there, and that looks even better yet. Okay. So we said that we had um, extrema at uh, 0, input 0, and, output, and uh, input at 4. Would you still agree to that, according to this? Okay. Um, if you're going to prove this to me graphically, I'd, I'd want to see a point up here. And so we can do a point on. And we'll do another point while we're down here at that. And, um, you know, just I'm going to change the point to make sure I'm at 4. 
and change this to make sure I'm at zero. Oops, what did I do? There we go. A little um, tangent there, prove that the slope is zero. But uh, I want to show you something else. What was the derivative for this? Do you remember? Do you have it there? 3x squared minus 12x without the factoring. Okay, so there's my derivative. I'm going to uh, I'm going to move that equation up a little bit. I'm going to move that over. And uh, let's see which one of these is my. There's my graph too. I'm going to change the attributes because I want to make sure I don't lose sight of what that is. So I'm going to come over here to graph two, and I'm going to make it a dashed line. so that I can make sure I see that. Now, what I want to point out is that when we look at uh, things like this, um, the original graph, the original graph is a cubic equation. Hope you, that you're familiar with cubic functions, how the graph goes. The derivative is a parabola. The derivative has um, how many zeros? Excuse me, how many zeros on the derivative? Pardon? Well, where, where the zeros are. Now, when we say zeros, what input, or excuse me, what variable are we looking to be zero, input or output? The output. So where is the output equal to zero? And there are two, one here and one here. I'm going to go into menu, and I don't often show you this analyzed graph. I'm going to do analyzed graph. I'm going to put a zero, and I'm going to go and identify graph 2 and it's going to then I can set a like a little neighborhood around that and it shows me there and I need to go back into analyze graph and again select graph 2 and go a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right and I can then actually identify now you can't use this with test to press so you have to be a little bit cautious about its use during homework Okay, so the zeros of the derivative. Now, the zeros of the derivative correspond to what points on the function? The extrema, yeah. Because the output of the derivative, listen carefully, the output of the derivative is what on the function? The slope of the line tangent to the curve at the point, yeah. So if, we, if we're looking at the, uh, the tangent up here, the slope would be zero. The output of this point is zero. What about this point? Does it also correspond to an output or to an extrema? Yeah. So we have, we have um, the output again of the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at that point. Now, take, look, keep your eye on the derivative. Notice that between the zeros, what is true about the output values of the derivative between the zeros? The output values are what? So the output, the, uh, output values of the derivative are what? Negative. Is that what we found out here? That the derivative is negative between Okay, so if the derivative is below the, M, the horizontal axis, meaning that the outputs are negative, is that true? Is this graph decreasing between those extrema? Yeah. Beyond, on this side of it, the outputs of the derivative function are above, which means that the outputs of the derivative are which means that whether well, it's positive, okay, which means that the function outputs are increasing. Okay. Same thing from four on. These are the functions increasing are the output values of the derivative above the horizontal. And they are. Um, what I'm going to do, and I don't know when I'm going to do this. Um,